here we are at the weekend and we have more confirmed transfers for you. Obviously on the weekend ones what we do is we take a look at the players that have signed for new clubs this week. All 100% confirmed. You know this is a confirmed transfer rumour episode. Why did I even say rumour? No, it's a confirmed signing. Confirmed transfer episode. That makes a bit more sense. I did a rumour one this week on Wednesday. A lot of you probably haven't seen it. It'll be in the top right corner. There'll be a little eye there. You can click it and watch the video there if you guys wanted before you watch this one. And because there's been so many transfers this week I may have to do a double upload of rumour. Um, no confirmed ones. Sorry, why do I keep saying that. There's going to be a double upload potentially for confirmed ones this week. So if you guys want to see a confirmed one tomorrow, another one. Okay, another episode. Drop a like and a thumbs up down below. 5,000 likes. Can we do it? If that happens, boys, it's coming tomorrow, all right? It's a promise. And as always, guys, get gripped with doing custom controllers, Xbox and PlayStation. Get gripped in the description down below. Why am I even looking at it like this? We'll see if we get you 5% discount this weekend. Huge stuff happening. Okay, so it's time to get into the first player then. I'm going to take a look at a player that was confirmed literally a couple of days ago, right? So this is pretty fresh news. We've got Jose Font. Now this guy, obviously, he's left Southampton. He handed in a transfer request there. He wanted to move. Now this guy, now I mean, he's been linked with lots of clubs, actually, to be honest. He was linked with Man United for a long time. He's been linked with Liverpool, I think, as well. He's been linked with lots of different clubs, and it just it happens to be he signed for West Ham out of nowhere. I don't think anyone actually expected this. West Ham centre-back, obviously, Jose Fonte signed an £8 million deal from Southampton. Now, he's come out and said that West Ham can look to be challenging in the top eight. I thought he wanted more than that, you know. I thought he wanted like Man United, Liverpool and stuff, but he signed for West Ham. He's, probably, he's 33 years of age, to be fair. Now, this is what he's actually come out and said. Bearing in mind, this is only a two and a half year contract. He won the Euros as well. I signed for West Ham because they are such a great club. and Well, a very big club. They have a lot of fans. I have known for a number of years how passionate they are, right? So, he basically loves what West Ham have, the support and the fan base and stuff. He wants to be a part of it. Apparently, Slavin Bilic was a massive part of his move. You know, he sold in the idea. You know, he, he biggest influence, Jose Fonte is basically saying. You know, he sold in the project and ambition of the club. Apparently he has part of his family living in London currently so he can obviously live with them. Apparently his family are West Ham fans as well so that's also how. But yeah I was a little bit shocked by this because I was rumours that he was going to Man United at one point in the summer and maybe even a little bit in January a couple of rumours nothing major. There was rumours him going to Liverpool. Now I don't know he just went to West Ham £8 million. He wants to live in London. He wants to work under Slavin Bilic and obviously he likes where West Ham's going so it's fair enough why he's made that decision. Next up is another player now who's actually well this one's been done for sort of a while now. But anyway, Gabriel Jesus, Jesus, however you want to pronounce his name, he has gone to Man City in a £27 million deal. Now that Brazilian is actually eligible to play against Tottenham, which is today. Obviously, if time you've seen this video, the game would have already happened, so you already would know if he played and if he scored a hat-trick or two. I don't really know. We don't really know. I don't know at this point, but you guys probably do know. Now listen to this. Pele has actually described the 19-year-old as a better player than Neymar, right? So Neymar fuming about this. Neymar is absolutely angry. And there was high praise from Romario as well after he played with Jesus in a charity game last month. So he's following in the footsteps of people like Pele and obviously Romario. So this guy's got a big name under him. Now a lot of guys from the UK wouldn't have heard of him but a lot of Brazilians. He's pretty famous in Brazil. Now obviously City have actually like owned him. They bought him I think in the summer I think but you know he was still playing for them finishing the season in Brazil or something like that before he came over here. So I think that's now why it's finalised now. It's, it's a bit of a weird one. But yeah that's right. This, obviously Guardiola needs probably a player or two in January. He's not. He's found it quite hard at the minute. It is a bit of a struggle for him at Manchester City and maybe a new talent like this guy can unlock the doors and lots of defences because you know he's complaining about oh um I don't know City have got enough of the ball they're making opportunities and stuff but hopefully this boy can actually come and put some of these opportunities away but for Pele to come out and say this guy is actually better player than Neymar now what do you actually think about that you obviously Neymar's done it Brazil no in, well, obviously for Brazil and Barcelona currently Jesus is just starting off now can he go for Man City can he prove he's better than Neymar Pele you've set a big reputation on this guy I hope he lives up to it now if you've been on my channel watching a few of my videos this week let me know in the comment section down below just put the number three in the comment section. I don't know why I want you to do that, but just put number three if you're still watching this point and you've watched a few of my videos this week. But anyway, Memphis Depay has obviously gone to Olympic Lyon. Now, he's featured in a few of my videos this week. This is why I mentioned it, okay? He's been in a couple of videos and I want you guys to go out there and check it out. I was in, obviously, in my rumor one on Wednesday, which is now confirmed, so that rumor was absolutely correct. And he was in another video, which was like a downgrade one, so that was a little bit of a strange one, but, you know, I'll let you guys go and watch that for your own, sort of, your own reading, your own viewing. But anyway, Memphis Depay has left Man United for a deal worth £20 million 
I believe, with rises, bonuses, and stuff like that. Obviously, the 22 year old has found it quite a struggle at Man United this season. Last season, he did not too bad in the Van Hal, but this season, he's just had no chances to prove. And ever since he's told Mourinho he wants to leave, Mourinho has not given him a single chance. He's not even made the squad to go to some of the games. He's not even made the bench, right? Because as soon as he said he wanted to leave, Mourinho was like, I'm not going to give this guy any, any chance now. But Mourinho has actually kind of said that everyone in the club still likes him and he still has a potential future at Man United. This is really interesting. Listen to this. So Mourinho basically is confirmed there is a buyback clause in his contract, which is pretty, you know, a lot of people are speculating it, but Mourinho sort of confirmed it in one of his interviews the other day. He's come out and said that, you know, there is potential for him to come back. Everyone at Man United really likes him. He's got a lot of talent, so hopefully one day he can come back to Man United, which is a bit strange because you would have thought, why don't we just loan him out and stuff? But I guess this was an easier, better financial way of doing it for Man United. So the fee is actually £16 million pounds with a potential rise into 21.7 with add-ons, including a Leon qualifying for the Champions League and Depay getting a new contract at the end of his current one he's just signed. Yep, and that is confirmed. United have also agreed a buyback and sell-on clause, okay? So if Leon actually go on and sell him, Man United get a proportion percentage of the money that is lent, that is then sold for. So yeah, not a bad deal for United. They usually get sort of, you know, battered about with a few players, but they've done pretty well here to either potentially have the choice to bring him back or get some of the money from Leon selling him on. They've done well. It's a bit of business there from United. Next up, we have got a striker now who's been at a lot of different clubs, all right? He's been lots of different clubs on loan and stuff, and it's not quite worked out for him, but now he's finally signed a permanent deal. We have Patrick Bamford who's gone back to Middlesbrough. He signed there on a permanent from Chelsea. The 23-year-old returns to the Riverside Stadium where he spent the 2014-15 stadium on loan, obviously, from the Blues. He began the season on loan at Burnley, but he was recalled by Chelsea on Saturday, having made six Premier League appearances without scoring for them. This is his now, That was his sixth loan spell away from Stamford Bridge, so he's had lots of loan spells, and I guess it is probably time for him to move on. And I think he's done a really good move, to be fair, because when he played for Middlesbrough in the Champions League, uh, Championship, sorry, obviously, he was absolutely smashing it. He was doing really well, scoring lots of goals, and this is how well he was doing, all right? In his previous stint with Borough, Bamford finished as the club's top goal scorer with 19 goals and was named Championship Player of the Year, which is absolutely huge shout. So when he played from Championship Player of the Year, top goal scorer, he's now signed that on a permanent move. Hopefully he can relive that form for the same club and hopefully do well in the Premier League this time. It's not the Championship, it's a bit different. Chelsea fans, what do you actually think of this guy though? Put it in the comment section down below. Do you think it's a really big loss? Do you feel like selling him now is a big loss? But he has had six loan moves, guys. You know, he deserves his chance to really go away and prove himself. Otherwise, he's just going to be on loan here and there and still be owned by Chelsea. Never actually have a chance at Chelsea. Next up, we have a guy who's actually a fullback and he's actually pretty decent. He's been about for a few years now. He's been at quite a few different clubs or three different clubs now, including this one he's gone to. Martin Olsen. Now, he's been at Blackburn and Norwich and believe it or not, he's made pretty much the same appearances and the same goals for both teams. It's actually a little bit weird. I'm going to tell you about it. He has made 117 appearances for Blackburn, which is pretty, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of game time and obviously scoring three goals. No, yeah, one, two, three. But he's played 119 goal games for Norwich, which is only, you know, two more games and scoring also three goals for them. That's almost weirdly similar. But now he's gone to Swansea, who actually today beat Liverpool. So big result for them. Obviously, that is absolutely huge result. Paul Clement's come in. He's got his first win, I think, for Swansea and it's a big one against Liverpool as well. He's made a couple of recruits, including Martin Olsen, who's actually signed for an undisclosed fee. So we don't really know how much he's signed for. This isn't the only sign-in that obviously Paul Clement's made. He's signed Tom Carroll as well. But anyway, this guy's got a lot of experience in the Premier League. You know, he has been about for a few years. I think he's been playing in the Championship as well. And obviously, going to Swansea, they obviously feel like they need him and they feel like it's a good addition. Hopefully, he does well. Today, Swansea have done a very well. Last but not least, we have got a guy who was ex-Premier League. Obviously, he's played. I think he's a Premier League title holder as well. So he's won the Premier League with Man City. We've got Martin Di Michaelis. I'm pretty sure that he did win the Premier League when he was there. He was at Man City for three years, between 2013 and 2016, making 78 appearances for them. Since then, he went to Espanyol, only making two appearances for them in a season, which is really, really bad. And he's been a free agent since, obviously, the end of the last season. And he's now signed for Malaga. So he's been a free agent for a couple of months now, but he's now signed officially for Malaga. Now, if you guys are unaware, he actually used to play for Malaga, making 84 appearances, scoring 70 goals for them back in 2011-2013. So he's gone back to, you know, one of his original clubs. Villa like Bamford, but also very different as well. This guy also holds an Italian passport, so instead of Argentina, maybe he could have played for Italy one day. That is for a, a nation change video, which I might bring you this week. But this guy has agreed a very short five-month deal, all right, just to take him through to the end of the season, to take Malaga through to the end of the season. They've got another option now, another centre-back. Like I say, it's good for him. He's gone back to the club he started at, and like I say, five months for, for Malaga. They haven't signed him under a big contract. They're obviously happy with that. Anyway, guys, these are the biggest signings this week. Well, not the biggest, because we've got some actually come to tomorrow's episode, which is going to be huge as well. If you guys want to see that, drop a like and a thumbs up down below. 5,000 likes in this video, and I'll bring you that one. We've got Jose Font, a bit of a surprise going to West Ham. We've got Gabriel Jesus going to Man City. Not a surprise, because that deal has been sort of done for ages. Man 
Memphis to Leon. I featured him in the Cranks of Rumour episode on Wednesday. That is not a surprise neither. Patrick Bamford, the Middlesbrough, not really much of a surprise, but he's gone back to a club where he absolutely smashed it for us. So I hope he does really, really, really well over there. Martin Olsen, lots of Premier League experience. I'm pretty confident he's going to do well at Swansea. And last off, Martin Dimikadis, a very well experienced defender who's also gone back to Manigo, who used to play for before. And as always, guys, get gripped with doing custom controllers, Xbox and PlayStation. Get gripped in the description down below. Why am I even looking at it like this? Anyway, guys, I'm out. Hasn't played as always. Have a good Saturday. And let's, uh, let's hope tomorrow is a good one as well. See you for the next video. Peace.